Why is the restaurant closed? Some restaurant chains are more beloved than others, and some fade away without much fanfare. So let's dig into the 15 worst failed chain restaurants that no one misses. It's official. Welcome to the Cafe 80s, where it's always morning in America. The awkwardly named The Official All-Star Cafe was one of those bright and shiny themed restaurant chains that had their glory days in the 1990s. This chain was actually owned by the people who owned Planet Hollywood, king of the theme restaurant at the time. The Official All-Star Cafe had a whole team of big-name athlete investors, including Joe Montana, Wayne Gretzky, Shaquille O'Neal, and Monica Seles. The athletic chain opened its first location in 1995, but by 1999, the chain was shut down. This restaurant chain was a casualty of the demise of its parent chain, Planet Hollywood, which was forced to file for bankruptcy. Bankruptcy! Sports, alcohol, and burgers seem like a winning recipe, but it couldn't save the official All-Star Cafe from being eliminated from contention. Steak through the heart. Steak stud, steak stud, steak stud, steak stud. The steak and ale restaurant chain had been around since the 1960s and was doing all right as an independent chain in Texas. Then, in the 1980s, Pillsbury bought the chain and decided to take it national. The little chain quickly expanded to 280 locations and was successful for a while. However, as competition among these kinds of chain restaurants grew stiffer, steak and ale started to flounder. Its menu did not keep up with the changing times, as people turned more to fast foods like burgers, pizza, and tacos. In 2008, all of the steak and ale locations closed their doors for good. The chain ran a popular promotion in the early evenings that included a free drink and dessert, but even this could not save Steak and Ale from becoming one of the worst failed chain restaurants that no one misses. When it rains, it pours. Respect the rainforest! If a relaxing lunch with friends just isn't enough, then maybe animatronic animals, lightning, and a colorful aquarium sounds more like it. This might sound a lot like an attraction at Disneyland, but it actually describes a chain of restaurants called Rainforest Cafe. A jungle-themed exterior lured you inside, where you were treated to faux fauna and flora as you munch on not-so-exotic dishes, such as beef lava nachos and jungle steak and shrimp. You could finish your meal with a decadent slice of tribal cheesecake, but the food usually received fairly low marks from diners. How's everything going over here? Terrible! Go away! This restaurant chain had its heyday in the 1990s, but since then, most of their locations have closed down. Even though there is still a precious few still operating somewhere in the wilderness, Rainforest Cafe definitely feels like it's fading into the distance. You're hopeless, Charlie Brown. What happened to the steaks that were in there when they closed? The first Charlie Brown Steakhouse was opened in 1966 in New Jersey. The small restaurant chain became successful enough to expand into New York and Pennsylvania. Although Charlie Brown's enjoyed several profitable decades, it eventually fell out of favor with customers as the competition among casual dining establishments exploded. A worthy competitor emerges. By 2010, the parent company of the chain filed for bankruptcy, and as part of the proceedings, most of the Charlie Brown's locations were closed. The old steakhouse lives on in spirit, though, because two locations remain open in New Jersey under the name Charlie Brown's Fresh Grill. Mighty Casey's at the Bun. I'm just getting a hot dog. We're all getting hot dogs. Mighty Casey's has struck out and become another failed chain that lives on in memory only. This hot dog chain started in the Atlanta area in the 1980s and developed a loyal following of customers who were looking for a hot dog instead of the usual hamburger. The Chili Dog was one of the chain's best sellers, but the small fast food chain also sold hamburgers. It's a hamburger made out of meat on a bun with nothing. Unfortunately, a decent hot dog is pretty easy to make at home. Even so, Mighty Casey's was doing well enough by the early 1990s that a competing chain called Crystal bought them out in 1994, so most of the Mighty Casey's were converted into Crystal locations. Say it ain't Sambo's. I'm sorry if that sounds racist. 
Unfortunately, the most memorable thing about this fast food chain is that some people complained about the name. Some critics felt that Sambo's was a nod to the little boy in The Story of Little Black Sambo, written by Helen Bannerman at the end of the 19th century. The name of the restaurant chain was actually a combination of the two founders' names, Sam Battistone and Newell Bonin. But this didn't stop people from continuing to criticize the chain's name. The founders did make it easy for critics because they decided to adopt the image of a black child as its mascot and used him in its advertising. The chain should have been known for its pancakes, but it couldn't shake its association with racial stereotypes. The mascot was eventually changed by the early 70s to an Indian boy wearing a turban with a pet tiger. Was that any better? At the height of the chain's popularity in 1979, Sambo's boasted more than 1,000 locations across 47 states, but it quickly declined after this peak until only the original location in Santa Barbara, California remained. Minneapolis Mexican. We went to Chi Chi's <laughs> and danced the night away. The room completely disappeared. When you think of Minneapolis, Minnesota, you probably don't immediately think of great Mexican food. But former Green Bay Packers star Max McGee and Marno McDermott did think of it. The men opened the first Chi Chi's restaurant in 1975. This Mexican food restaurant chain was many Americans' introduction to this kind of cuisine. Over the next couple of decades, the chain expanded and enjoyed a decent level of success. However, all of this changed when a Chi Chi's location suffered a hepatitis outbreak. Hepatitis C! Joke's on you, I already got it! This type of unfortunate occurrence can be the end for any restaurant chain, and indeed it was for Chi Chi's after three customers died. The Mexican food chain was forced to declare bankruptcy in the United States, but never say die, because the chain lived on in other countries. Howard's End Like every other Howard Johnson's with a bright orange roof? The restaurant chain's orange and blue color scheme made Howard Johnson's locations recognizable, but ultimately couldn't save it from an unhappy end. Howard Johnson's was not able to change its stilted ways and paid a heavy price. In their heyday, Howard Johnson's restaurants were often a convenient choice, located right off of highways where families could get a decent sit-down meal before hitting the road again. Host of the highways. Yep, Howard Johnson's host of the highways. These convenient locations for travelers probably kept the chain afloat longer than it otherwise would have. However, a dated diner-style menu and plenty of competition from fast food chains eventually turned Howard Johnson's into just another orange-roofed failed chain restaurant. Sorry, Charlie. So then I went over to Beefsteak Chulies. Beefsteak Charlie's? Yes! The original Beefsteak Charlie's opened in New York in 1914 and was a successful restaurant for many years. In 1976, Beefsteak Charlie's started a chain and eventually opened up more than 60 locations around the New York area. The chain was well known for its steaks, of course, but it also drew in customers with unlimited shrimp and salad. Even with aggressive promotions, the success of Beefsteak Charlie's was short-lived, with most locations closing their doors by 1987. The company had to file for bankruptcy in 1989, and more restaurants closed. Compliments to the chef. I failed, Sarge. This is my second burger. Fast food hamburger chains have never had a shortage of competition, and this competition has only grown fiercer over the years. It's no wonder that many of these chains fail, even if they serve up decent food. Burger Chef is one of those relatively small chains that had to go head-to-head -head with the likes of McDonald's and Burger King, and didn't live to tell about it. No, dead men tell no tales. The first Burger Chef opened in 1954, and expansion soon followed. In 1982, the parent company of the burger chain started selling off Burger Chef locations to one of its main competitors, Hardee's. Notorious Big Boy Who's the big boy? In 1994, the Abdow Corporation decided to end its affiliation with the big boy brand they owned. This led to the closing of 18 Abdo's big boy restaurants in Connecticut and Massachusetts. The corporation cited changes in customers' tastes away from its usual fare of fried fatty foods and toward broiled food and other healthier options. 
This explanation seems a bit weak given the popularity of other fast food chains. Abdow's also offered an extensive breakfast buffet, but it was too easy to opt for a quick breakfast from the drive through window of a fast food chain. Hey, look here, fellas. You guys gonna have to order from the drive through menu. Fortunately for lovers of the Big Boy Burger and Hot Fudge Cake, a few Big Boy locations still exist, such as the Bob's Big Boy in Burbank, California, that continues to serve hungry tourists and locals alike. Left the station. The train leaves at exactly 11 o'clock. We've missed it. Victoria Station was an old-school restaurant chain that served specialties like prime rib. The best thing about it was that the restaurants were set up inside vintage railroad cars. This seems like a fun adventure without the rattling smoke and inconvenience that comes with actually taking a train ride somewhere. Vintage train cars don't come cheap, so even though the chain brought in a fair number of customers, Victoria Station faced more than its share of financial troubles. The chain saw its greatest success in the 1970s when it had more than 100 train car locations across America. Steaks and trains is an interesting combination that generated a loyal following. However, because of the high operating expenses, it wasn't enough to keep the trains running. Towering Imitation There used to be a White Castle right here in this location. Where is it? The White Tower chain restaurant's attempt to go up against White Castle did not end well for the pretender to the mini hamburger throne. White Castle's well known today for its mini hamburger sliders. The slider chain sued White Tower in Michigan in 1929, arguing unfair competition. White Tower countersued and pointed out that it was the first mini hamburger restaurant in Michigan. White Castle won the case and got control of slogans, building designs, and names. The Victorious restaurant was also awarded $82,000, which was a lot of money back then. Oh my god, you're rich! Maybe there was room for two competing mini hamburger chains, but White Tower felt too much like a ripoff of White Castle, so it became one of the worst failed chain restaurants that no one misses. Planet of the Hollywood. What's the closest planet to Earth? Planet Hollywood. <laughs> Planet Hollywood had an ace up its sleeve. Connections to Hollywood celebrities like Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger, who were investors and were slated to show up at grand openings and drop in occasionally to greet diners. Planet Hollywood locations were stuffed with movie memorabilia that likely compelled people to visit the restaurant more than the actual menu did. The first few years of operation saw considerable success, with its stock reaching a respectable $32 a share. However, Planet Hollywood's problems quickly spiraled out of orbit, leaving investors with nearly worthless stock, valued at just 75 cents only three years after the franchise's peak. We're broke! The owners tried to expand their way out of financial trouble by opening new locations around the world, which only ended up making things worse. This isn't going to be good for anyone. Kenny Rogers Roasters finally open. There's an episode of the hit sitcom Seinfeld where a Kenny Rogers Roasters opens across the street from Jerry's apartment. Mayhem quickly ensues with several characters evaluating the proceedings with the line, That's not gonna be good for anybody. Kenny Rogers was an iconic country music star. He was the gambler, but it turned out he wasn't really a restaurateur. Kenny Rogers Roasters opened its doors in 1991, and the concept of roasted chicken and sides seemed like a winning concept. It also sounds like the new chicken chain's major competitor called Boston Chicken. This competing chain expanded its menu and changed its name to Boston Market in 1995 and never looked back. When you add in the long-running Kentucky Fried Chicken franchise to Kenny Rogers Roasters' troubles, you have a recipe for failure. The fledgling chicken chain served decent food that was very similar to its competition, so it's not surprising that Kenny's chicken outfit became one of the worst failed chains that no one misses. Looking for more Babble Top videos? Well, we've got them, so stay right here and check out one more. Just tap or click.